welcome. Uh, I'm Julien. I'm the author of uh, this book, Protects in Action. So what we will go through today, um, it's actually four things. So the first thing we're going to use is the we're going to have a look at the Vertex core APIs, especially what we call verticals and the event bus. Uh, and, I will, and we will be do, building a very simple HTTP API. Uh, second thing we're going to do is look at uh, some SQL client of PostgreSQL. Uh, then we'll do, um, we'll do some kind of edge service. So we will play with a HTTP client to make requests to other services. And here we'll do some chaos engineering, which is extremely fun because you can just break everything and see what happens. So basically what we'll do, we'll just kill, we'll, we'll just introduce some delays uh, in the SQL database and we'll see what happens and how to mitigate uh, to mitigate issues. And if time permits, we'll look into, we'll look into real time web applications. Let me just show you what we are going to do in the first step. We're going to use a very simple running example uh, through, through the hour. Um, so what we will have is temperature sensors. So they're not going to be real sensors, of course, because I, I don't have sensors with, with here. Um, but you could just, the code would, would not be very different from what you would have if you had some real sensor uh, talking over, I don't know, MQTT, HTTP, uh, Kafka, MQP, whatever. So the idea is, is to have these simple sensors. Um, so each of them is going to be a, a microservice. It's going to expose a, an HTTP interface. Uh, a very simple API we will be able to, 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 to get data, data from. And whenever they, they, they update the, the temperature, they will push an event to what we call the event bus. And we, we will see what happens. In a second step, we'll have another microservice, which is here. Uh, which is going to look for all temperature updates and store this into uh, a Postgres database. And it will also expose uh, some, query, uh, some queries over some uh, HTTP API. The third step, um, we're going to have some gateway slash edge service, uh, which is going to give us a simple API to get all the latest data or some very specific data. Um, so it's going to look for updates and maybe sometimes query uh, the store services. And the last step, um, we'll have some kind of dashboard, uh, which is a web application. And it will be, it will receive live events from, uh, from, uh, from, from the whole system. So we'll have a live interface and I will show you how to do it nicely with, uh, with Vertex. Let's start with this, which is making sensors. So I'm going to, to use IntelliJ, but you can just whatever you want um, to really, you can use Visual Studio Code is, well, yeah, whatever you want. So if we want to have um, a sensor, we need a, sen a class to, to represent what's in a sensor. So in Vertex, uh, in the core APIs, you have two concepts to understand. One is the verticals and the other is the event bus. So a vertical is where you will put your code um, uh, the, the whole business logic is going to be into verticals. And verticals is the basic deployment and code unit you will have to deploy. It's as simple as that. So if you want to have a sensor vertical, well, you have a sensor vertical. And um, <clears throat> what you have, all, all you have to do to make it a vertical is to, extra, uh, is to extend something called abstract vertical, which is part of the core APIs uh, of Vertex. So what we we will need to to do a sensor um first thing we need some kind of identifier so the uuid is really really fine uh so we just generate that uh, we're going to have a, a temperature which is a double uh, so this double is going to evolve over time uh, and we will see how to do that um, and to make it change we have a random number generator as simple as that um, of course, we would need to log events because it's very convenient to log and see what happens. Um, and the last thing is we will need some HTTP port to, um, to run the server. So uh, to do that, we will just use uh, environment variables. Uh, so in our case, it's going to be HTTP port. And by default, uh, it's going to be on port 8080. But it's something we can override if you want to. So 
that's um, that's really the the skeleton of my of my vertical. Um, and the vertical is a very simple thing. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't have many methods. Um, basically, what you need to to override is the start method. Maybe the stop method in some cases if you want to do some cleanup uh, work uh, when you shut down a vertical. But in practice, it's really uh, the start method uh, which you are going to uh, to have to override. Stop, yeah, it happens, but not that frequently. So when you have this stop method, when the vertical is going to be uh, to be started, um, you can see here we have an argument which is a promise. So this is because we are using vertex, and in vertex everything is asynchronous. So we are going to deal with lots of asynchronous things, and because starting the vertical is going to be made out of asynchronous operations, we need a promise, which is an object we will complete to say whether we are, whether we actually succeeded in deploying the vertical or if we failed. So what I mean by that is that we, this vertical is going to start an HTTP server. And because you start an HTTP server, um, you need to report if you managed to start the server or if you failed. And basically, the, the reason is, is very simple. Um, you may not be able to start a server. For example, if you start below, um, if, you, if, you, uh, if you use a port number which is too low, basically you're going to fail because you, don't, you may not have the permission. Uh, or maybe the port you want to open is already in use. So in those, in those cases, you will fail. So how does, that, how does it work? Um, so let's start by um, just updating the, the, the temperature. So, when you're in a vertical, you have an object, which is called vertex, which is a field. And from here, you have lots of basic operations. So for example, I can create an HTTP server. Um, I can access the event bus, which is something we will have a look uh, a bit later. We can deploy verticals. Um, we can have periodic operations. We can close the vertex context. We can have data, datagram sockets uh, as server as client. We can make the DNS client because we may, we may want to make queries. We may have a HTTP client. We have a TCP client, etc., etc. So basically, you have all these um, low-level um, methods to create all kind of networked applications with Vertex. So if you want to um, to update the temperature, what we need to do is to have a, a method a callback, which is going to be called, say, every two seconds, so every 2,000 milliseconds, we are going to do something like this, update temperature. OK, so this is going to be called every two seconds. And from here, we're going to update the temperature by some random number. Um, so the long parameter which is given here is just the identifier of the uh, of the of the periodic timer. Um, in my case, I just don't care, but you know, you, you may be interested if you want to cancel this periodic timer, basically. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to say temperature equals temperature plus um, I'm going to use next Gaussian from my num um, random number generator, and I'm going to divide to divide that by two. Uh, and that's it. So next Gaussian is going to give me a number between minus one and plus one, and I'm going to divide by two. So this is going to be a, a very simple model to update uh, the, the, the temperature. Um, so I'm going to do this, and I'm going to log this to say. Um, Temperature updated. And I'm going to give the new value and I'm going to do temperature like this. So if I if I want to run this, so I'm, I'm not even creating an HTTP server or, or, or anything. Um, so I have my periodic task which is being set up, and I want to um, to say that my vertical uh, is working, I'm just going to say complete on the uh, on the promise to say, okay, I'm done, my setup is done, my vertical should be working, so here, here we go. Um, so we, we'll come back to 
adding an HTTP server and HTTP API. But first, uh, let's just try to deploy this vertical and make it work. So uh, in Vertex, you don't need anything. Like, uh, you know, uh, you don't need um, an application server or you don't need this, this kind of thing. You can just have a main method and it's a very simple programming model. You have a main method, you deploy your vertical, that's it. So what I'm going to do here is um, create um, uh, a vertex object like this. Uh, in this vertex object, I'm going to say I want to deploy a vertical. Uh, so you can pass uh, a name, you can pass an instance, you can pass a class, you can pass many things. Um, one thing you can do is, um, so what's the name again? It's sensor vertical. You can say sensor vertical new, uh, like this, and this is going to pass a, uh, a supplier. And uh, what's wrong with this? So I've made a mistake. And I don't know why. So I'm going to do something very simple. New sensor vertical. Okay. I'm just going to deploy it like this and run. So, uh, yeah. And this is it. So uh, you can see that every two seconds, you know, my, my temperature is being updated. And so I'm going to start the application and show, show you one thing from the logs. Um, you can see here that uh, the, um, the thread identifier in logs is, is going to be the same or, or, uh, for every invocation. So this is called the event loop thread zero. Uh, if I had deployed another instance, it would be another, uh, another thread. So basically what I can do is um, I can show you what happens if I deploy this multiple times. So it's sensor uh, vertical. And you can pass um, deployment options to say, I want say four instances like this. So if you do that, you will, you will deploy four instances of this vertical. And what's going to be different here is that you see that I'm stopping it again. You can see that we have different different threads because we have four instances. We have four threads operating. Uh, so one thing you need to know is that a vertical is deployed to exactly one thread, which is an event loop, which is processing asynchronous events. And it's something you should not be blocking. You should not do some blocking operations while you're running uh, on the event loop. Uh, so that's a very simple. Um, Example, uh, I'm going back to, um, to this and have an HTTP API. Um, so what we need here uh, now is, so we need to create an HTTP server. Um, so there is a nice router object you can use. Uh, so a router is an, is an object to define uh, your HTTP endpoints uh, based on path and methods, etc. cetera. Um, so you can define a router like this. Um, you can say that when you get uh, a request on a get, a HTTP GET request on slash data, then you want you define a handler. So the handler is going to be called to process the HTTP request. Um, so we can call this get data, for example. Uh, we're going to create this method uh, with context. More to that in a minute. And yeah, I think I think that's it for for this method. So what we need to do now is create the uh, HTTP server. So we create the HTTP server. We say that uh, all requests are going to be handled by the router, which is then going to dispatch uh, the request to handlers. Uh, we say that we want to listen on port, um, you know, the HTTP port, which is given as an environment variable, and this is, this gives us a future. So it's not a it's, this future object is to notify us whether the operation which is here starting the HTTP server succeeded or whether it failed. Um, so do not confuse the, the Vertex future with uh, those from the JDK. They are much more complete in Vertex and they are non-blocking, which is not the case of those from from the JDK. So. First thing is uh, we're going to say, so in case of success, so when we manage to start the HTTP server, we're going to say 
so we have a callback here uh, on failure because you know you, you have some kind of failure well we say stop promise fail so by doing this you will just propagate the failure down um, to the um, to the class that's been deploying um, so we are going to say um, HTTP server running. So we, we are going to repeat the some stuff in the logs like the uh, HTTP port. Okay, and once we have that, we can do start promise dot complete to say that the operation succeeded. And uh, we need to actually implement that. So when get data is called, uh, we need to uh, to answer the uh, the HTTP request and give basically the temperature data that we have. So what you, what we have to do is prepare um, some kind of JSON object, which we call payload, or just call it whatever, whatever is fine to you. Uh, in this object, we are going to so this is a JSON object is from Vertex. It's a class we have. So we, here we're, we are going to say um, we so the ID. Uh, I'm just checking something was being expected from the other side. Yeah, it's UUID not ID. So UUID we just put our UUID. Um, these are pure methods, so you can just change things. Um, temperature. Um, we pass the temperature and we put the last thing we put a timestamp because it's very important and we just use system current time milliseconds it's not too bad and then we go through the context now so we say context of response um so we we need to say that it's going to be json so we say uh common type so we had um we need to have this header to say this is application JSON content. And yeah, basically we just needed to end it with a string. Um, so we, we take our payload and we say encode. So that, there are two encode methods to encode JSON to text. Uh, so encode is the, is the compact form, which is as a one line string. Um, but sometimes when, when you want to debug, there is also encode prettily which is going to give you a nicely formatted JSON object. So we just encode um, something we can also, we can also set the status to 200 to say uh, the request was fine. Uh, we may also log to say um, that we've been processing a request from, so processing HTTP query or well, request. From and we are going to give the um, the requester. So we go context dot request remote address, and this is going to tell us who's been ma making the request. So if I do this and I run my application, um, if I run this, it should work. So let me check. So my my temperature is being updated. Great, uh, my server is running, etc. So everything is happening on, on one thread again. Um, so I'm using port HT80, sorry, um, and it's data, and it works. So I'm making a query, and I'm getting my JSON object. It's very simple. And if you look into the logs, what you can what we can see here is that again there is only one thread that's been managing uh the periodic task to update the temperature and also serve the http request so the threading model in vertex is very simple once you deploy your vertical is running on just one thread uh it's going it's going to be an event loop thread and it's going to be the same for the whole life uh of the vertical um so that's how you can do a very simple microservice, something which has been specified um, because the next step will be to have a store like this or this way. 
Uh, so we have a store. So we we want some some um, service to be able to 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 notify to be to receive all the updates. Uh, so this means that my sensor uh, service needs to publish the temperature updates to something called the event bus. So let me show you how to do this. So I'm going to go back here. Um, and in my um, update temperature methods, I'm going to uh, publish this. So I'm going to reuse this actually, um, creating the HTTP, well, the JSON um, payload. So I'm going to have a method called create payload like this. And uh, I'm going to go through the event bus. So I go through the event bus and I say uh, publish to some destination, which is a, a very simple string. So I'm going to say it's temperature that updates. Um, I publish some JSON, which is my which is my update, and this is going to be sent over the event bus. Um, so when you do this. Um, I can show you how it works. Um, so for example, um, I'm going to my main method. I'm going to do something you would not do in practice, but I'm still going to do it just to show you what how it works. Um, so the event bus is really um, what you should be using to make your verticals communicate uh, with ephem ephemeral ev events. Um, so you can have a, a consumer that's going to listen to temperature that updates and it's going to receive a message and that message um it has uh it has a, an address a body and headers which you can define so it's a very simple lightweight uh kind of not messaging but eventing system um and whenever there is an update what you can do is log from here so it's going to be logged from the main method um and i'm going to, to do something not really nice but this and message the body and i'm going to uh i just need to say it's json object because it's going to be some json so and and could pretty so in the logs it, it should be nice and this way so my vertical and my main method they should be communicating like this so as you can see, um, from the main method, I'm using another event loop. So the vertical is, is, is on one event loop, and the main method is creating some kind of hidden context under the hood for you, um, just to stay uh, faithful to the uh, vertex threading semantics. But you, you receive this update over the event bus. So that's one part of the equation. Um, the thing is, the event bus like this is working just inside your process. It's not working uh, across the, the network. And it's exactly what we need to achieve in this step. So in this step, we need the event bus to work across uh, the machine. So there is a mode called the uh, clustered event bus. So we can have a vertex instance, but working as a cluster. And in this case, the, the event bus is not just working inside your process to dispatch events, but it's also working across a distributed system with as many nodes as you want. Well, as many, it depends. Um, of course, if you have three, I mean, 30K instances of our network, I'm not sure it works fine, but yeah, you get the idea. Um, so if you want to use the Cluster the event bus, the only thing you have to change is here. It's here. So when you you want to deploy. So you do uh, you say I want a, a vertex uh, clustered vertex mm -hmm. with some options. So in these options, uh, there's a whole bunch of things you can customize, but for today you don't need to customize anything. And um, basically, so yeah, the Clustered vertex in instance is not going to start straight away. It needs to connect to the cluster and set up the cluster manager, etc. So it's an asynchronous operation. Um, and again, we can use the future to, to say um, to have our vertex instance on success. 
and on failure uh, yeah we have a failure we can't connect to anything so in this case we may just log and say error because whoops so i'm not trying to be too creative in the uh, in the names as you can see and here we're going to deploy vertical and we deploy um sensor whoops, sensor vertical and that should be fine so if i run this like this is going to run with uh, clustering so with clustering you have a bunch of uh, cluster managers uh, by default we recommend uh, hazelcast because it's it's fine there is infinispan as well with jgroups um, you can use console with a module from community you can use apache ignite so we have a we have different engines uh, that you can use uh, but the ID, uh, so I'm going to shut this down and switch to the uh, terminal to show you how it works. So I'm just going to um, package my, uh, just just try to, to compile to have some jars um, and run stuff um, because I'm going to run four sensors from the command line. Um, so I have something called run sensor uh, on port 8080 like this. So when it starts, you have a bunch of logs from mostly Hazelcast. Uh, and here it's telling you that there is only one node in, in the cluster right now. Uh, but if I start another on port 80, 81, so it's going to start another port, but you, in the logs, we should see that the, yeah. So we, we see that in the, in the cluster, we now have two members here. Uh, and if I create, no, not like this, like this, like this. So if I run 82 and 83, we have four sensors running and they are dispatching their temperature updates to whoever wants to listen on the, uh, on the event bus. So it's not, so it's not too bad. Um, I'm going just to do something in advance to show you um, how it works. I'm going to run the dashboard just to show you that we have live updates. Um, and then later on, I will show you how it works. So it's HTTP. I think it's in port 5000. Yeah. So we have here our four our four sensors uh, and we have the live updates. Uh, so it's all running with the dashboard in real time. So yeah, the, the point here is just to show you that just by changing, just by putting Vertex in cluster mode, I have um, I have all my nodes sending events to whoever is interested. So I'm going to shut this down um, because the goal was not to show you this straight away. And we're going to switch to the next step. So Having Postgres uh, as a service to um, to store events, so it's going to listen to all these updates and store that into a database. So how it works? Um, I'm going to switch to so we can just forget this project. Uh, we go to temperature store, and it's using a, a Postgres uh, reactive client from the Vertex project. So it's a clean implementation based on the wire protocol of PostgreSQL. So it's not JDBC, it's really non-blocking code uh, that we give uh, from the Vertex project. And the performance is, is really, really good. So to connect there, to connect there, so it's more or less the, the same canvas for the vertical. Um, we are going to run on port, uh, HT port uh, 7K. Um, and when we want to connect to Postgres, uh, we are going to use a class called pgpool. So pgpool is the pool of connections to our database. Um, you need to pass some options, like obviously what's the host of the, of the database, uh, um, your credentials, uh, the database, etc. So in my case, it's all um, hard coded in the it, it's in the code, and I'm not showing you the good thing. Sorry, still new to this OBS thing. So um, you you create this this pgpool object. Um, and then you have so your host, uh, user database, password credentials, etc. Uh, so 
Here, this is all uh, hard coded, which is bad, of course. Um, IntelliJ. So yeah, this is bad, but of course, it's something you can override with environment variables, um, file configurations, files, etc. So I'm just putting this hard coded in in, in, the, uh, in this example because it's just very easy to understand. So what you need to do is, um, so to receive the updates, um, you just listen over the event bus to temperature updates. And whenever you get an update, you will just call this method, which is going to make an insert into the database. Um, then I have some HTTP API because I want to either fetch all the database or, or I want to get to fetch only the data for a given sensor or I just want all data, but over the last five minutes. So these are, these are the different routes um, I've defined for this service. Um, and yeah, to show you, we are going to do uh, this implementation. So get all data. So get all data. Um, first, I need to show you the, um, the schema. So I'm not using any um, object relational mapping tool or anything. Uh, it just plain SQL and Postgres SQL. So the, the schema is pretty simple. We have the UID, uh, the timestamp, the value uh, of the, of the temperature, temperature update, and the primary key is a combination of U, UID, and timestamp. It's pretty straightforward um, SQL. So if we get there, um, so the query we need to do is select everything from temperature records. Um, so we need to, to go with pgpool, uh, have a query, a prepared query. So we do it like this, and then we need to execute. So you can pass a tuple. Uh, a tuple is one you want to pass values. We'll show you that in, a, in something in another query. Uh, so I'm going to execute, and when I execute, uh, again, it's an asynchronous operation because you need to talk to the database, fetch the results, and get back to you. Uh, get back to you. Um, so we have a future, and I'm going to say on success. So I have a row set, which is a bunch of rows. So in this case, I'm going to do something, and on fader, I'm going to uh, fader. I'm going to do something else. So I will start with uh, the failure. So I want to get all data. I want to just, so if I have a failure, I need to basically say everything, everything's gone wrong. So you go through the context, um, you just fail it like this, say 500. So this is HTTP 500 to say, boom, I'm just dead. Um, and of course, what you should be doing um, on the, on, on the server side, you should be logging. So say, whoops. So I don't have time to be fancy with the log message. Um, and I just wrap up the failure. So what's more interesting is what happens when we actually have the, the rows. Um, so we can do something like uh, for um, row, row in rows. And we're going to do something. So what we need to do is assemble all the um, all the values into some kind of JSON, big JSON, JSON document. So for that, we can have a, a JSON array like this. So it's a JSON array. Uh, for each row, uh, what we need to do is array.append to add. So we add a new JSON object. Uh, and this JSON object is going to be made out of the values. Um, from the row, so we need to say uh, UID, comma, uh, what am I doing? Put, so we put U like this, UID, so row dot get value, uh, get, it's a string, so we can say get string UID uh, like this. Um, we need to repeat, so I don't remember the schema, it's the value. Okay, so we need to put temperature um, and row dot get double um, 
value yeah value and we need to repeat the what am i doing and we need to repeat the uh yeah like this Boop, boop, boop. something wrong uh pom, 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 put uh time stamp like this and it's going to be get temporal i think and it's t stamp so t stamp i'm going to go to string because otherwise it's not going to work um so let me check because I'm lost with all the parents and stuff. Okay. So I'm adding every row to the array and then, yeah, then I should be fine. So I can just go to context, um, the response. So we need to say that this is uh, JSON. Let's put header. So we say content type, um, it's gonna be JSON and we end with uh, so we create a new JSON object just to wrap the array into an object uh, which is a quite common pattern if you if you do some JSON um, so we say data um, and we pass array and we encode and it should be good so uh does it work so let's try so again it's vertex code is very simple to run you can just use a main method and run run from your ide you just it's just fine uh we're just waiting a few seconds to see in the logs that we've joined the cluster so yeah connection refused of course because i didn't start the i didn't start the postgres server so yeah um, so to start the server, I'm using Docker Compose. It's very simple. I don't have to remember the whole Docker command line thing, which is big uh, to say to not to say anything else. Um, and I'm going to start again my service. So if you join the cluster, you, you should see all the members, which are the sensors plus this new service. Okay, so this is deployed and you can see in the logs that we are record we are recording a few values. That's fine. Um, and then if I make a query, so it should be uh, HTTP. I don't remember the, the port. So what's the default port? The default port for my service. It should be 7K, okay. So 7K. And I don't remember, it's all, okay, very simple. Yeah. And ta -da, you get all the data from uh, from database. So again, this is running uh, from a single event loop uh, for the vertical and that's pretty fine. Um, there are some other uh, things you can do like for UUID. Uh, so if you want to have a viable path uh, a variable in your path. Uh, you can do it this way with um, this syntax. Um, so it works pretty, pretty, it's pretty similar. So you do another kind of SQL query. Uh, and here you can see that you have a parameter, which is here, $1. So it's going to be the UUID of the sensor you'd like to get all the data, data from. Uh, to pass this as an argument, you wrap it with execute inside the tuple and, and there and there you go and then it's pretty much the, the, the same logic you have uh, if you want to get the last five minutes again it's from the vertex side is it, exactly the same logic you make your query and then you you had the http response um, then it's just you know get back to school do sql pretty simple And the thing I should be showing you, which I haven't, is what happens when we receive an event. Um, so we just do same thing here. We just do an insert into the database um, and we just store the data we receive from the event bus in JSON 
and we store that uh, onto the event bus. What we can do, then we do some chaos engineering, but before that, I will show you um, uh, Edge service, uh, so how to use uh, an HTTP client. Uh, so the goal here, um, so we have our sensors, oops, there, no, not true. yeah, this way. So we have a, our sensors, we have um, the store service, and now we need some kind of gateway slash edge service to make a simple HTTP API to connect to all these. Uh... Before I go ahead, so there is a question where the tuple class comes from. Uh, the tuple class is from the Vertex SQL client. So it's simply something we have uh, in the Vertex APIs for the SQL clients. So it's not a tuple from some other libraries. Uh, another question, can you use a no, an object relational mapper? Well, in theory you could. I would recommend if you really, really need something which is not plain SQL, I would recommend you use something called Juke, and there is a binding called Vertex Juke in the community that you can find. Uh, other than that, it's actually refreshingly simple to do SQL. Believe me or not, it's actually very simple. Maybe you don't need a, an object relation on mapper. It's it's not intuitive, but yeah, sometimes simple is better. So we have our edge service. Um, so the edge service is that um, gateway style of service. Uh, so I'm going to rush through this thing because I'm being very talkative today. So I'm going to try to yeah going to try to go back to um what's the no not this one okay so we so we need to do it um very quickly so what's different here is that we have something called the web client so the web client is a nice usable http client if you want to make queries to other services um and the idea in that kind of gateway service is that if you do slash latest, you will just push back, push back the, uh, the latest temperatures you've been observing and you've been observing and caching them in a very simple hash map. And a hash map works again, because there is no, uh, race condition concurrency thing going on. So it just, you can just use, because you're always going to access it, access it from the same thread. You don't, you don't need to do anything. Uh, you don't need to synchronize log, use logs, et cetera. Um, so if we want to get the last five minutes from the gateway, we need to talk to the, uh, store service. So what you need to do here is use the web client, um, and do a get, so you can do, you know, get GD post, whatever HTTP method you want. Uh, so you need to talk to the, uh, have an environment variable for that store host. Okay. So store port store host. And I don't remember what's the URL. Um, so in this service, it's last five minutes. So you need to make this query to the uh, other service. So last five minutes. So what's nice with uh, this, um, this API is that you can say that you want the response to be decoded for you, like as a buffer, JSON array, text, whatever. So you can just say um, JSON object. So you say, give me a JSON object because it's much, much nice, nicer for me. Um, what else? You just send the just send, and you have you have a um, you have a future. So it's going to give us an HTTP response. So I'm going to do something like map to say um request request dot body because it, it's json i just want to map so that i can extract it and i have my json which is great so when i have my json tool on failure i'm going to simply say failure um and context fail 500. Um, so again, I should be logging, etc. But we don't have much time, so I would just do something a bit a bit simpler. 
So I have my JSON, which is from the other service. So I need to choose my context, uh, go through the response. Just say again that this is uh, going to be some JSON. And end with JSON of the encode and should be okay. And status 200. Although you, you have it by default, it's, it's a bit better to do it. Uh, it should work. Um, so I'm just going to quickly recompile. So I have my um, Postgres database running. Compilation should work. Hope so. Yeah. So if I go to the edge service, I'm going to um, run the edge service. So it should be, uh, yeah. Whoops, it work. So I hope it works like this. Um, just waiting for it to start. So it's a bit longer to start because we are using cluster event bus. If you don't use clustering, it just starts in a snap with, with Vertex. Um, so if I do this, this query um, and I want, so what's the endpoint? It's latest. Okay, so let's see latest. So this is the latest data from the event bus and the other one is five minutes. So if I do five dash minutes, boom. I have an error. Cool. Um, this is the, the beauty of doing things on the go like this. Um, where well, did it go wrong? Ooh. So for some reason, there is a failure. And there is no good demo without a failure. Uh, so, I've made something stupid, I'm sure. And of course, I'm not logging anything, so I can't find it. Um, so let me go back to the edge main method. Should be this one. Okay, so I need to expand this and log. Okay, so I'm going to kill the version which is running here. I'm going to run from here. So maybe I'm just wrong with the port numbers or something. Okay, so this is starting, blah, 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 6K. So can I see anything? Whoops. And connection refused. Okay, so I'm, I think I'm not on the correct. Oh, of course. So it's not running. So yeah. So I must run the store and port. Uh, what is it? 6K? I ah, know it's 7K. I'm wrong. 7K. Sorry for that, people. Yeah, wrong endpoint. Yeah, you're right. So, so this works. Uh, the edge in my here should be working, and then yes, it works. So I'm making a, a so so yeah, I've been able to do to do this. Yeah, yeah, Thierry, it's, it's all good. So I have this working. Um, I'm just going to launch it from the, not from my ID, but from the, the command line, because now we are going to do some chaos engineering, which is great. Um, so don't cry here, we're going to break everything. So just running the edge service. So I have my four sensors, my store and my edge service. They are running. I'm just going to check if I can get, yeah. So everything is running. And I'm going to use a tool called Hey. Um, and I'm going to um, do this query, like last 
five, uh, five minutes. Is it is it the good one actually? Five minutes like this, yeah. So I'm going to say, um, and hey is a very simple tool to do some um, some load testing. Um, so by default, it's doing 200 requests, and we have this distribution of uh, response times. So it's basically the latency. So it's the time when you are talking to the edge service, and the edge service talks to the um, store service, and the store service talks to the database. Um, so of course, you need to warm up the application, etc. But you know it's working. So I can see in, in the chat that that somebody is waiting for proper chaos. So you can see that all my responses are pretty okay. We are below. Um, yeah, we are. Yeah, we're pretty good. Um, so what I'm going to use is a tool called Pumba. Um, and and I'm actually not going to kill the database. I'm just going to introduce some delays over the network of the database to the service. It's pretty simple. So all the network requests that go through uh, to the Postgres uh, um, to the Postgres uh, database, they are going to be delayed by so for one minute they are going to be delayed by three seconds plus minus five uh, well open five seconds. So I'm going to do this um, PG chaos like this and we got some delays. So my database is still working. But now if I make a query, so I'm going to do it manually like this, and we just got to wait for, you know, some time. So HP three plus, I don't know, seconds. So we're waiting, we've got some delays and everything is down. And if you, if you run hey like this, it's going to be worse because it's going to be a nightmare of delay. So, with Vertex, we've been using asynchronous things. It's been great, it's been fast, etc. But all of a sudden, everything is going down because we have delays. So basically, my system here is not responsive. It's just you know, stuck because of network delays. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, to, to let Hay run in the background. Um, but what we need to do now is to mitigate the, the, this kind of failure. So if you want to mitigate this, uh, because I don't have much time, I'm going to use some Git magic and get back to uh, the version that was working properly. Um, so just, yeah, just to show you what Hey had. So just by introducing network delays, uh, we had this kind of histogram. So yeah, the the response time is going, is going to the roof. Um, and it's not been too bad here because we were near the end of the uh, chaos period. But yeah, it should be it should be worse worse than that. If we've been running hay differently, it would be much much worse. So um, if you want to avoid that and have a service which is still responding, even if you have a failure on the database side or any other service side, uh, you need you need to use something called the circuit breaker. So a circuit breaker is a very simple kind of proxy between you and something else uh, when, to, when you want to do an asynchronous operation. And when, it, when you start to see enough failures, so you have a threshold that you can set, once you start to see failures, the circuit breaker is going to be open, is going to, be open to say, it's not, it's not worth sending requests because the, the system appears to be down. So it's got, the circuit breaker is going to be open and we can just respond with some default values. Um, and after some time, the circuit breaker is going to be half open. So it's going to try to reconnect. And if the next request succeeds, we get back to the closed state. So the circuit breaker says, it's okay, you can, you can make your request. And if it fails, well, you just go back to, uh, to to being open to make sure you're not trying to overload a system which is broken anyway. So it works like this. Um, so you have your circuit breaker, you give it a name, as simple as that. And then when you want to make the web client query like this, so you so this is more or less what we did uh, manually. 
and we are we are doing two things. So one thing is I'm adding a timeout on the HTTP queries to say that after five seconds, if I don't have a response, it should be an error. Um, this is a good practice to, to, to do because if you want to ensure bounded time on your responses, you need to set a, you need to set a, a bound. So just give a timeout, uh, something like maybe 10 seconds, 15 seconds, depend, depends on your system. Don't do something like 500 milliseconds because it's probably too short, but do something like this. And then you wrap the whole um, operation with the circuit breaker with execute. It's giving you a promise to say, when you've completed the operation correctly or not. So when we get the response in our case, um, when we have a success, we um, we complete with a JSON value. So we pass, so the promise is going to complete with the JSON value. If we manage to, to make the request, if we have a failure, we just report, report the failure to the uh, circuit breaker. And then, so this is the future, and when you when then you have your future. So on, on success, so you've you've managed to make the request. Um, so what you do is that you cache the you cache the result. It's going to be used later on. So here you just get back to the client with a response. If you have a failure, then you, the the good thing is that you're going to fail. So there are two options. Um, either you just fail, but you fail quickly. So your client is, is not stuck waiting for some response, which is going to happen in maybe a minute or two minutes or I don't know. So you just want to fail fast. Uh, and then it depends on the application domain. But if you know, you're managing temperatures like, like we do here, uh, we don't really care about what happens with, uh, we can just serve some old data. So we just cache it. So if we have some older data, we will so serve the older data. And if not, well, we just fail, but at least in both cases, the service is still able to respond. So the difference um, here, so I still have my database. I'm going to introduce some chaos here. Uh, I'm going to kill the old version of the edge service and run it again. So I have some chaos going on. I have my edge service and I'm going to make a request. So I'm going to request the five minutes. And uh, yeah, it's not what I wanted. I wanted to make, yeah, it's been fast, but it's not, it's not, it's not exactly what I wanted. So I want to show you what happens, not with load testing, but you know, I'm just doing a request. So in this case, well, I have nothing I, I can give you because there is an error. Um, and because we use the, the circuit breaker, then the circuit breaker is waiting. So we're gonna wait, yeah, for the circuit breaker to be half open. So it's ready, it's ready to try again. If we try again, it's going to wait for five seconds until we get a timeout. It's going to break again. Um, so the issue here is that we have no cached data. Um, so here the chaos is done. So if I do this, at some point it should be open again. Open circuit. And then I have a, a question in the chat. Yeah. Uh, what's going on? It's half open. Okay. Yeah, and there and there I get some values back. So it was the time for the circuit breaker to be um, half open and ready to make something again. So if I run the chaos again, and I try to make that request again, uh, it yeah, it's going to wait. It's going to have some issues, but it's going to give me some cache data. So I'm going to be quite. Uh, it's going to be quite okay. And if you use hey like this, the, um, the, the, um, the histogram of response time is not going to be too, too bad. Uh, there is a question in the chat. What's the maximum number of elements in a cluster? Uh, well, there is no strong limit. Uh, so it's a bit hard to say, but 
if, if you tell me you have 50 instances, I'm probably going to tell you it's fine. Then if you tell me you have uh, 3000K, it's probably too much, you know. What happens is that, is that the more node you have, the more traffic you have on the network, uh, because you need, depending on the cluster manager, they're more or less chatty, then you have uh, the event bus communication. So yeah, don't go crazy, but for a reasonable number of instances, it should be fine. So yeah, you see that, you know, just by using a circuit breaker, you're able to keep your service more or less responsive. Uh, so that's more or less what I wanted to show you. Um, the real-time dashboard, I'm going to show it back to you just so we finish on that and then some questions. So again, this is a dashboard. Uh, it's going to be connected to, um, to Vertex and listening to all the updates uh, from, the, from, from the sensors and it's going to be updated in real-time. Um, here I, I can show you how it works. So it's actually using the event bus, just like we did for, for the other communications. So how it works is very simple. So you go to the dashboard. Uh, in the dashboard Java class we have, uh, it's uh, serving the, uh, the HTML page from the, as a static file. And then there is this special thing called the uh, SOGS handler. So SOGS is more or less like um, WebSockets, except that it's a library that can degrade to other type of connections like long polling. If you have a browser that doesn't support web, web, WebSockets or if you are on a network with some proxy that is disabling WebSocket connection, etc. SOGS is able to, you know, have some kind of degraded mode to, uh, to handle this. Um, and the, the idea with the SOGS handler is that it's going to um, allow the JavaScript client in, in, in the browser and the backend to communicate over the event bus. So it's actually extending the event bus to the, um, to the client like this. So the dashboard service is listening to all the temperature updates and pushing that to all the you know connected browsers. So how you do that is so that's on the back end. You just need to say which destinations are being permitted because you may not want to forward all the events from the event bus to the JavaScript client. And then you have the same programming model uh, on the back and in the front. So there is a small library. Uh, which is called Vertex Web Socket something. I forgot. Yeah, Vertex Event Bus. Yeah, Vertex Event Bus. So you use this and then just connect to the Event Bus from JavaScript. So you have the same model. Um, and you basically register a handler for some kind of destination over the Event Bus. And just like you would do in your Java code on, on the server side, uh, you receive messages. And when you receive messages, uh, you can just here update the, uh, the, 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 the interface. Uh, something you need to know is that with this event bus object, so it's not just the backend which is pushing events to you on the front end. Uh, you can actually publish something. Um, I'm not sure I get the completion correct, but you can say, yeah, you just send, you, you can also send some events some destination and you can pass some, some JSON if you want to. So it, it's really handy because you can have the front and the back using the same model of using the event bus to pass, to pass events around and have some communication. So that's really how it works. I guess we can, uh, we can have, have a few questions. Question is, would you mind to repeat what Vertex is? Uh, and I actually didn't say what Vertex is. So Vertex is a library for writing asynchronous and reactive services applications in Java. So it's a very simple toolkit you can use. You can do all kinds of networked uh, applications and it's reactive, meaning that it, it, you can scale it. So you can scale multiple instances um, to adapt to, um, to some traffic and to deal with failure as well. And it's reactive because you have some bolts and nuts if you want to, um, to handle cases where you have failure. So you want to um, just like we did with chaos engineering, which is something you can, you can catch that in, in the replay. 
uh, when you have a service, you make a request to that service. The service is down. Uh, there are ways to not be stuck waiting for some response, which is not going to uh, to uh, to happen. So, yeah, reactive is it's not just about being asynchronous and scalable. It's also about being able to uh, deal with failures and managing the response time to keep it under control, no matter if you have a system that's working well or if you have failures. Uh, so there was a question about how much penetration is it having in the market? Um, is it being used for projects in production? Of course, yeah, we have. Um, so I can't necessarily give names, uh, but if you go to the Vertex website, you will see um, you will see examples. So Vertex is being used for many kinds of services. Uh, it's been used in the game industry for backends for games uh, is used in uh, lots of enterprises system as a gateway uh, as a microservice development framework uh, slash library um, it's used in internet of things to aggregate uh, data from various sources um, the, 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 there is one example which you can find for, on the michelin blog it for example uh, they are using Vertex for connected tires to collect data um, and integrate it with all kind of other systems they have. And at Red Hat, we use it for, so we have Vertex as a project, but we also use it as the foundation, as well, not the foundation, but one of the foundation for Quarkus, which is our, our, our other enterprise framework. Is this non-blocking IO event loop model? Yes, absolutely. Um, if you're familiar with Node.js, there is a small difference. So with Node.js, when you start an instance, you have one event loop for the whole program by default. So you can have workers, etc., but it's not really uh, the same thing. In the case of um, Vertex, by default, you have multiple event loops based on the number of, of um, cores you have on your machine. So yeah, all the asynchronous operations happen on event loops. Somebody's saying, I would mention that Vertex is polyglot. Yes, the big focus of course is Java, but you can use Kotlin, uh, you can use JRuby, you can use Groovy if you want to, uh, you can use Scala. Uh, and the good thing is, is that in all these languages, um, we have some idiomatic binding to these languages. For example, if you use uh, Scala, uh, you will use not vertex futures, but you will use uh, the scala futures, so you can use pattern matching or all, all, all this stuff. Uh, if you use Kotlin, we have a great integration with uh, the the coroutines of, of Kotlin. Uh, if you use Groovy, you have you know bindings to have some nice DSLs uh, for Groovy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, uh, I didn't mention it, but the fo and the focus is mostly on Java, uh, especially in the book, but you can use uh, Vertex with multiple programming languages on the JVM.